Good day and welcome to the Friday edition of Sport Rep. I will be your host, Jesse Jackson Kauraisa, leading you into the weekend's proceedings and fixture. In today's show, we will look at news about the appointment of new netball Namibia coach, as well as speaking to Republican sports journalist Andrew Pullman, given that NTV Network Television will this weekend broadcast a rugby match live at the Hage Gainkorp Stadium. And now for your latest on the hit list. Former Malawi's Queen's goal shooter Maria Mary Waya has been appointed as the head coach of the Desert Jewels. Waya will be assisted by former Zimbabwean netball gem coach Lloyd Makunde and Antoinette Wentworth. The team has been tasked to help the Desert Jewels qualify for the 2023 World Cup. The pipeline is up next after the break. Stay tuned. The weekend is back and so is the pipeline. When we hear the weekend, we can only think about sport action. Well, the Namibia Media Holdings Network TV will be at the Hage Genkop Stadium to broadcast a match between Western Suburbs and F&B Wanderers Live. There will also be other matches taking place across the country. Veteran Republican sports journalist Andrew Pullman has more for us. Stay tuned. Um, Andrew Pullman, good afternoon. Um, it's a beautiful Friday and we have a man who knows about rugby, an expert in this department. What do we have um, this weekend that's coming up? Yeah, Jesse, so um, I think there's, there's four matches of course. Um, we are in the second round so it's teams that have already played each other. Um, so at uh, at Rewood, we have uh, basically the, the the bottom team and the top team against each other. Rio Falcon uh, playing against Kudus, uh, the visitors, who will probably be looking to add maximum points usually. Um, then uh, the one that we'll be broadcasting is at uh, at Target Gangop Stadium. Uh, it's, it'll be Western Suburbs home match for them playing against Wanderers. Um, during the first round, when they played at Wanderers, uh, Wanderers won that match comfortably, uh, 45 to 10. Um, so, but in the meantime, I think uh, the suburbs have found some good form. Um, they've beaten Kudus, um, so I think it should it should be a good match to watch. Um, then uh, there's at United, um, UNAM will be playing there. Um, so I think UNAM will likely be favourites uh, to win that one. Um, we'll have to see what, you, what you United can come up with. And then probably maybe the most vital one for uh, two teams that are currently in fifth and sixth positions um, outside the top four is uh, Grootfontein playing at home against Rilbot. So um, yeah, they are... Um, Rewot is uh, seven points off the fourth place, and Grootfontein is ten league points off. So um, for them to, st if they want to stay in contention for the semi-finals, for both of them it'll be a very important uh, match. Um, also, they are very closely matched when they played each other um, in the first round at Grootfontein. Uh, Grootfontein only won. Uh, no, when they played at Rewot, Grootfontein won uh, by two points, uh, 24. Oh, 24 to 22, so um, two evenly matched sides. Um, I think also last year uh, when Rilbot did make um, the semi-final, then uh, uh, Grootfontein was in fifth position, just missing out. So um, yeah, it should be should be a good match. Um, I think all of the clubs now have their national players back, so 
And we saw last weekend uh, for Wanderers, uh, guys like Jacques Tron and Obert Norkia made a big difference. Also, Andre van der Berg was there in, in good form for them. Um, so, yeah, UNAM, they also they were struggling, but to, to gel, maybe just with the inclusion of the, the national players. Um, they, they, they played well, but um, they, they were they just really uh, couldn't. Uh, they were struggling a bit. They only beat the Rioboot also by four points. So, yeah. Okay, so um, which do you think is the match of the weekend where you think that the teams have all to play for, especially this time of the season? Um, yeah, so like I said, uh, the Grootfontein Rioboot one will be a good, uh, good clash, but I think most teams are. Uh, looking to stay in contention, not lose lose positions. Um, the the ones that are in the top four, uh, they may uh, look they like they have a, a bit of a, a points difference ahead of the other ones. But um, it's still important for them to to stay in a good position. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, Wanderers against Western Suburbs. That, that's also number two against uh, what is it? So number is three or four that, now. That NTV will be broadcasting. Yeah, Suburbs is currently in fourth place. Um, so um, it's it's a it's it'll be a good match. match. It's always an exciting match. Um, too bad that it won't be at Suburbs Park. We know that it's always um, Suburbs Park is always a park that um, brings a lot of memorable matches. Yes, so, but, but I don't know why it's, they are still playing at the Hagen Stadium. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what the situation with their field is, but um, uh, since they've moved or since they've moved their home matches to the to the national stadium, they beat Kudus there, so um, I don't think they'll have uh, any tr any troubles. So yeah, I think it's a good field to play on, so a good surface, mm -hmm. and uh, it should be a good match. Okay, um, Pullman, just. One question, we, we have qualified to the Rugby World Cup, so is there any pressure on some of the players to perform, especially the local players, just to attract the coaches or to attract um, interest to, to be part of the World Cup team? Um, yeah, I think it's... it's uh, uh, having qualified, it, it always just uh, gives us its, it's uh, relief once we get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's not always as simple as it looks, um, but um, yeah, now that we know that we are going for sure, and it's just time for everybody to love the game. I mean, we are in a difficult pool, starting off against Italy. So, um, guys that think they have a chance to to make the team, um, they'll definitely have new energy to. To, uh, as you say, to, to impress the coaches and to, to prove that they should be in contention. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Pullman. Cool. That was Andrew Pullman. Volleyball action resumes this weekend at the Israel Patrick Yambo Police College. We have the Kings men team battling kudos today at 18.30, while AfroCAD D plays against NDFA at 20.30. The fixtures will continue on Saturday with NAS ladies playing against UNAM at 9 a.m. before Kings men team take on NAS. KNVC ladies will host kudos at 13.00 p.m., while kudos men team take on NDFA in what is expected to be a tough match at 15.00 p.m. You can also enjoy some of the fixtures um, that will be taking place there as AfroCat NDFA plays AfroCat C men's team that is on Sunday. Now we have some footage for you from the police courts. Enjoy. <laughs>
Now, just recently, Standard Bank Namibia announced a 1.9 million sponsorship to the Namibia Secondary Schools Rugby Union, which will be divided into 650,000 over the next three years. There will be important fixtures taking place this weekend too, that is at Rehoboth and across Namibia. Stay tuned for a video from Namibia School Sports Union coordinator Soli Daker, who was also at the launch, but we have not had an opportunity to show you this, and this is what he had to say. Minister, Honorable Hector Chandrera, uh, Minister of uh, Ministry of Youth National Service, uh, uh, National Sport Youth and National Services, and also uh, the CEO of uh, Standard Bank, Mrs. Mercia Gaisis, uh, Mr. Ainsley Daniels, the chairperson of Secondary Schools Rugby, with his executive present, uh, the media. Uh, good morning. For us, when I say with, for us, I'm referring to NSSU as an entity together under the auspices of the Ministry of Sport, Youth and National Services. We are so grateful for this initiative that started way back in 1918, uh, 2018, uh, but not only with secondary schools rugby, is uh, Standard Bank involved with school sports, also with development hockey, they are also involved with uh, school sports. And we are grateful for the social responsibility and corporate partnership that started today for the next four years. I will not uh, release the amount. I will leave that to the big guys to release the amount uh, for the next four years. And after the next four years, it will be revised so that this sponsorship will go towards the leagues, specifically this year from the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals to assist schools with transportation and we look at the cost of fuel currently. As we know that NSSU is 100% funded by our Namibian government, and because of COVID, a lot of companies uh, fail to adhere to their social responsibilities and corporate well-being. Therefore, NSSU lost out a lot on sponsorships as well as sporting opportunities. And with this new venture that we hope this new baby which is born today, we will grow this baby together, feed this baby, and look after the well-being of this baby so that we became 30 years from today and that we are still in partnership with Standard Bank. Because if you look at me, this is NSSU I'm wearing, we are blue, and the bank we are dealing with is also blue. Uh, last night, or three this morning, I woke up and then I, I thought to myself, we're in NSSU coming banking, we are banking at different bank, I think it's about time that we move also our account to where we are being supported. Because for we are with that bank now since 1990, it's not a bit longer, uh, and up till now, never ever did they support us with a single dollar. So that in itself says a lot where we spent our school's money uh, and we gained nothing from it. To the media present, thank you so much, my friends, for always telling our nation at large what is happening at school sports. And after these two years of school of COVID, I can I can happily say that uh, school sports is thriving. We sent just the past three weeks uh, ten national teams out of this country, four netball teams, six hockey teams and three rugby teams. And that in itself, with the limited resources to our disposal, is an achievement. <laughs> and with corporate partners like Standard Bank, we can achieve just much more. Because NSSU's mandate is to create opportunities. And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad uh, to see one of our captains, one of the staff of, of this bank, she came through NSSU, not only through our bank, but also netball. She was first a netballer, uh, Ms. Mengo. She was first a netballer. And then she became, then she decided, no, let me go to Netherlands and start playing hockey. But this is our pride. That is our pride. So those are the people that can tell the stories and the history of the school sports union. But there are so much more than them. The unfortunate part is that funding is always a challenge. 
so that we can go and unearth in the furthest outskirts of uh, Omaheke uh, from Ochichonjupa, uh, 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 Oangwena, Omosaki, you just name it. They are tiara. If you see that our junior sportsman of last year is coming from the south, how many more are there not? The only thing we need is funding. So, Standard Bank, thank you so much for partnering with us. Uh, Mr. Daniels, this is a baby that we should take care of properly and look after very well. Thank you so much, and thank you to the media. Thank you, Madam, for your presence here. I appreciate it always very much. That was Solidaker School Sports Coordinator. Well, it is indeed important and something very wonderful from Standard Bank Namibia to provide for the rugby. Remember that they were being sponsored by Momentum before. And so the dream continues. Um, the rugby team has already qualified to the World Cup and it is important just to have that school's rugby continuing. You hope that it can happen in football as well. We will now visit the marketplace and after the marketplace, we introduce to you our international correspondent, Andrew Ari Wohar, stay tuned. You know, a few weeks ago, I would never do this on a Saturday morning. Back then, I was standing in line all day. Now it's just like that. Mm, you are using the FNB banking app like I told you. Girl, it saved my weekend. Now I can do all my banking on this. Payments, transfers, checking statements, even opening accounts. Just, just like, like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I tell you what my husband even did? Even me. Even me, I want to save time with the, what's the name of the app? FNB app. Don't be left behind. Make the switch to the FNB app, online banking or cell phone banking, and change the way you bank to change your life. FNB, how can we help you? We, well, you might think that those on, in that FNB ad are actually from anywhere else apart from Namibia, but indeed they are Namibians, good actors as well. Well, let's go now to Ariokhar with the latest international news all the way from South Africa. Yes, good day everyone, international sport and uh, it is uh, Tour de France news still first, it's going to finish on Sunday, uh, but big news is that uh, the leader Jonas Vinegard, he secured a bigger lead even going into the last three stages of the Tour de France and a big favourite now to win his first Tour de France on Sunday in Paris. What happened on stage 18 was uh, that Jonas Vinegard actually won the stage. He won it in, uh, by one minute and four seconds over his biggest challenge, that is Tajes Pogasar. Pogasar, the previous two winners, he was the winner at the Tour de France. It was again very tough in the Pyrenees, in the mountains, and it was at one stage uh, Tajes Pogasar that fell. But it was uh, in the good spirit of the cycling, it was the leader Jonas Vinegard that waited for him. And uh, But in the end, it was uh, Jonas Vinegard that pulled away. Way. It was again a mountain top finish and uh, he won in 3 hours 59 minutes and 50 seconds. That was 1 minute and 4 seconds ahead of Tajes Pogasar. In third position was a boat van Art, and he was 2 minutes and 10 seconds after um, Jonas Vinegard that he finished the line. In overall classifications now it is Jonas Vinegard of Denmark that leads quite convincingly. Uh, he leads by 3 minutes and 26 seconds over Tajes Pogasar. Uh, the last 3 stages will be relatively easy in terms of there's no mountains involved uh, the third last stage will be quite flat then there's a time trial on Saturday 
and uh, it will finish again on Sunday with the short 115 kilometer uh, stage in Paris. Uh, in third position overall at the moment is Gareth Thomas. He is eight minutes behind the leader. And then uh, South African Louis Menke is still doing great. He fell behind quite a bit now, 13 minutes and 43 seconds behind, but he took up one better position. He's overall in sixth position. The 19th stage will be uh, 188 kilometers and it's described as quite a flat stage so it will be a day that the sprinters will probably come to the fore again. On to some soccer news, a big tournament, the Women's European Championship that's uh, taking place at the moment, a big quarterfinal that was played. It was Germany that beat Austria by two goals to nil. They go through to the semi-finals. They will play next week Wednesday uh, against the winners of France and Netherlands and uh, that game will be played on Saturday. The other semi-final will be played uh, in England, or England will play in that other semi-final on Tuesday, and they're waiting for the winners of tonight's game, that will be Sweden, that take on Belgium. The final of this uh, Women's European Championship will be on uh, next Sunday, the 31st of July. And now we continue international sports news with some golf news. Uh, three tournaments taking place, uh, two on the men's tour and a big tournament on the women's uh, tour. It is uh, firstly that one, it's uh, avian women's uh, tournament that's uh, taking place. It is one of the five majors on the women's calendar. And uh, the leader after the first round, Ayaka Furua, she is from Japan. Uh, she came in with seven under par and matching that. Also on seven under par is the world number two. Uh, that is uh, Nelly Korda. She's uh, from the USA. She came in with a score of seven under under par as well. On the main circuit, there's a tournament play being played in the USA and in Europe on the men's tour, on the men's PGA tour. It is a 3M Open that is taking place. Uh, not many of the world's top players playing at the moment after the British Open in these two tournaments. And it is a Scott Piercy of the USA that leads on six under par. Also on the European tour, it's the DP World Tour that's taking place. It is, um, they call it the Kazoo Open. It is actually the English Open. It's sponsored by Kazoo. And uh, the Kazoo Open, the leader at the moment is Paul Waring of England on nine under par low rounds in that tournament. And to close off today's international sports news, some athletics news. It's still the World Athletics Championship taking place in Eugenie, that is in Portland in the USA. 200-meter uh, men's and women's finals that was, and that was quite close as always in the 200 meters. The women's race, 200 uh, meters won by Sharika Jackson of Jamaica. She won in 21.45 seconds. Just behind her in second place, Shelly Ann Fraser Price. She won the 100 meters, but second now in the 200 meters in 21.81. And third is Dina Asher Smith of Great Britain, 22.02. .02. In the men's, it was uh, Nua uh, Lyles uh, from the USA that won in 19.31 seconds. Second place was uh, Kenneth Detnerek, 19.77. And third position was Eric Jung Knighton, 19.80 uh, was his time in the um, 200 meters in third position. Southern African interest there in eighth position uh, was uh, Luxolo Adams on a at the time of 20.47 seconds. Big uh, race tonight for Southern African interest, that is Wade Finikak. He is uh, tonight's Southern African time in the final of the 400 meters uh, race. So that's uh, international sports news for now. Hope you have a great uh, sport weekend and we talk again on Monday. All the best. Bye-bye. That brings us to the end of today's show. Do catch the Sport Rep show live after the match between Suburbs tomorrow at the Hage Game Corp Stadium. From me, Jesse Jackson, Kauretha, enjoy the weekend.